All right, ladies and gentlemen, today is a lot different look than we're used to from teaching and education. Well, maybe some education thrown in there a little bit, um, but more of an education about life and experiences, feeling the um, kind of, I don't really want to say the bottom of the barrel, but at I, the, the lowest of low, low, all the way up to the highest of the high. Um, for those of you who are my age, um, this guy graduated with us, Bismarck High, class of 2012, represent um, Mr. Alex Downhower is joining us today. He, um, like I said, not necessarily in an education or a coaching or a sports perspective today. I saw this guy's story um, the last couple months, maybe over the last year or two. Um, he's very vocal and very positive. I know he, he comments on a, a lot of different things with people who are struggling a little bit because he's experienced a lot in a short period of time, just being probably about 30 years old, just like I am. But um, he's he's very vocal in the sense that he wants to make sure everyone has a support system, regardless of what their own support system might look like, which is another reason that I really wanted to sit down and not just catch up with this guy, but hear more of his story and um, help him share more of his story. And maybe there's even some, not just families, but educators out there somewhere who could who could use a, a guy like Alex in their classroom and her program who has experienced a lot of negativity, but also a lot of positivity and not just help maybe their students, but maybe even a loved one or a family member who's experienced, who is experiencing things that are much relatable to Alex. So Alex, how's life been treating you the last couple of weeks? I know there's a lot of positive things going your way. I know I've been seeing your posts and I just, I've grown to just appreciate and be grateful for so many people that I grew up with experiencing happiness and success that I think it's, it starts to transpire in myself, just seeing other people experience that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me on here. It's, it's an absolute pleasure and an honor to be able to, to share my story with you. Um, life looks so much different than what I ever expected it to look like. You know, like you said, I, I have definitely reached and I think the bottom of the barrel is an understatement from from where I was a couple of years ago to, to where I am today. Never would have imagined to have the life that I have right now because I was so caught up in addiction that I, I couldn't I couldn't see past I couldn't see past my nose you know what I mean mm -hmm. um where where would you like me to start well I think it's interesting because I've had I've been with few few friends over the last week or two um, at just different events I know McQuaid's weekend was a couple weekends ago and even talking about hey I, I'm podcasting with Alex Downhower this weekend and I don't get like disgusted looks but they're kind of like confusion as to what in the world are you and Alex Downhower are going to talk about on the on a podcast that usually has educators on here but I think that's that's what makes this episode um so so interesting and so unique is um the story that you can share and um take me back a few years ago with I mean again, just as transparent and vulnerable as you'd like to be. I know you've shared your story with so many, um, the, the lowest of the lows and the highest of the highs, but take me back to, let's start <laughs> with the lowest of the lows and what you can remember being like, where, why am I doing this? What's going on with my life? This is, how can this ever get any better? How can this be better? How, what can I do here to flip the script a little bit? Yeah. Okay. So take it back a few years. I'll start September 10th. 2015 um i was working for a construction company at the time and i was doing some insulating in a shop and uh needless to say um my shoelace got caught on a gang nail and i fell 24 feet through an <laughs> attic onto concrete oh, God. shattered my wrist dislocated both my hips broke my neck a bunch of ribs right so mm. that was the start of it um before then I mean, I I partied with my friends, but it wasn't like excessive, right? Like I'd yep. party on the weekends, go to work on Monday, whatever. Um, this accident introduced me to Oxy 80s, mm -hmm. a, a very, very potent painkiller. Um, and I was prescribed those for, for four years after that accident. And uh, so what that did to me without even realizing that I became highly addicted to a drug that's very hard to come off of, right? So during that time, I'm, I'm taking these, these medications as, 
as prescribed for the most part. I didn't really take them more than I needed to because they lasted a long time. Um, one day I, I get a phone call from my doctor saying, hey, I need to meet with you. And let me back up a little bit. For those four years, I hardly had to see my doctor face to face. I would just make a phone call. He'd write the script. And I'd go pick him up, take him to the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. So when I got this phone call, I knew something was up. Um, so I go in, I meet with him, and he was like, hey, man, I'm, I'm sorry, but a new law passed. And I'm no longer able to prescribe you this medication. In that moment, I was so frustrated and be like, what do you mean? Like, I'm in pain. Look at all these injuries that I have, blah, 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 mm -hmm. right? Um, I didn't hear if he gave me a solution. He may have, but I didn't hear it, right? So I said some probably very ugly things to this doctor because that's where my mind was at at that moment. Yep. And I walked out of there and I made a decision that impacted my life terribly for the next five years, really. Um, and, and, I, and that decision was I called up a buddy that I knew was selling the same medication just illegally. Yep. And uh, that was the start of it, right? So that was 2000 and I'd say what 2015 2018 somewhere in there um 2019 yeah it was in 2019 um and it started off right it, it started off as just buying them so i wasn't sick right yep. because when i came off of those extended release 80s i couldn't I couldn't function, right? I, I was I was withdrawn and I didn't even know I was addicted to them. So I was going through all these things. And so I just called to get what I needed. Well, because I was so highly addicted to these drugs, I needed an excessive amount just to feel normal to where the person I was buying them from thought that I was selling them because mm -hmm. of how many I'm going through and, and things like that. Um, either which way, uh, one thing led to another. I met the guy he was getting them from, and and it just it, it started off on a bad road, you know, and and it it took a while for me to actually partake in in the, the selling or giving them to other people. But I just would buy a lot, get them for a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. But when you get involved in that lifestyle, like you blink and and you're 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 knee deep, you know. Yep. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, that, that started me on a bad path. I, I had a good career at that time. After I fell through the attic working for that construction company, I was working for Basin Electric. Mm -hmm. um, I have an associate degree in power plant technology and I was so consumed by what I was doing that that took over every aspect of my life. I have two children at this point, I'm, but I'm, not being a dad right i'm yeah. so not like i'm present <laughs> physically mm -hmm. but i'm not present emotionally or, or whatever and i'm putting them also in in terrible situations because of what i'm doing but the thing yeah. is, is i got these blinders on and i can't see right yeah. um we'll fast forward a little bit um may 20th no may 21st of 2021 so it took two years and I got picked up by U.S. Marshal Services, and they indicted me for distribution of a controlled substance. Um, and with that being said, like for me, it's it's even today, right? It, it's hard for me to accept that my addiction started because I was prescribed these by a doctor. Yeah. Right. Before that, I wasn't. I wasn't an addict. Right. Like I did stuff here and there, but like I'd, I've always. I don't know, I felt like it was just normal people stuff. Maybe that's mm -hmm. not normal to everybody else, but to me it was normal. Um, but yeah, my addiction, it, it, it started by a doctor. And so the resentment, right? I'm supposed to trust you to help yeah. me. Which. I mean, maybe at the time they were trying. Right. But yeah. It was it was difficult for me to swallow that. Um, I get picked up by the feds and 
Um, I'm 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 trapped in jail, and when you're federally indicted, you don't get a bond, mm-hmm. right? So I'm stuck. But what happens is that you four things can happen when you get picked up by the feds. They can release you with no conditions. You can be <laughs> released with conditions to like go to treatment or to sober living. Yep. Um, my condition was to be released, but I had to go to treatment and then sober living. And if I couldn't get into sober living after treatment, I would have to go back to jail. Um, it took me a while to to get into treatment, um, just because you have to have insurance to go to mm-hmm. treatment. But when you're sitting in jail or or a system like that, the state has I don't know. There's a whole bunch of technicalities, but it took me a long time for me to get insurance so I could get into treatment. Right. Um. I had this this crazy experience when I was in jail. So there was this guy that I was talking to. And when I was in there, I didn't really open up about what I was going through, right? Because I'm this is me, my my thing, and I wasn't about to tell people what I was going through. But there was this guy that started telling me about what he was going through. He was an older gentleman. He was probably in his upper 50s. And I had was vulnerable enough in that moment to tell him what I was going through. And he was like, man, what's your, what's your faith in the amount of time that you're facing? The only thing that you can do is give it to God. Right. I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't really know what that meant. And honestly, my first thought was like, F that I'm not doing it. Right. Yep. Um, <laughs> but then time goes on a little bit, probably about a week later, I'm, I'm in so much pain. I'm, I'm thinking about all the things that I'm missing out on, my kids' birthdays and mom's yeah. birth, all the things, right? Um, and so I went up to this guy and I was like, hey, I've been thinking about what you said. I, I, I just don't know. How do I give my situation over to God? And he was like, come with me. And so we went into a cell and we got on our knees and he basically, he prayed a prayer and I repeated it. And two days later, I got released into treatment. So that was like my first, like, holy crap. And that could have just been coincidence. Call it what you want. For me, that was God talking to me, being like, you're right. This is what I want you to do. Right. Yeah. Um, in the moment, I didn't know that. But like looking back on it, I can see these things now. You know what I mean? Um, I get to treatment and I'm really good at conforming and complying. Right. Like mm-hmm. when I get put into a situation, I can conform and comply, meaning like I can be who you want me to be for the time being so I can get the monkey off my back. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I did. I was doing the thing and and whatever uh, treatment was going really well. And then they started bringing me to these the recovery meetings. Right. Um, and I started getting vulnerable with those people about what I'm facing because being indicted, like when you get indicted, you're not facing like two years, right? Mm-hmm. You're facing like end to a life sentence. Um, and so I got scared, right? And and one of those first meetings that I went to, a guy shared his story and it sounded a lot like mine, right? So now, um, so now you're relatable, which is major positive. Right. And I and I felt like this guy told my story with a, just a little bit of, of of difference. And and the, in that moment, without realizing, I was like, I wanted what this dude had. Right. He seemed happy. Right. He he seemed like he had the things going for him in life that, like, when you look at somebody's life and you see that they're being successful, that's what you want. And I wanted to figure out how we got there. So I, I stuck around for a little while. Um, I continued to go to those meetings and while I was in treatment. And like I told you a little bit earlier ago, now it's to sober living or I'm going back to county jail. Um, so I applied for every sober living mm-hmm. home that I could get into. I got accepted into one and I was nervous at the time because I was like, man, it's in Bismarck. And like, that's where I was doing all this dumb stuff. And uh, anyway, um, I I accepted it and I and I get 
to i don't know if i can talk about can i talk about like which sober living i went to or is, is that that's, okay that's completely okay. up to you um anyway i got accepted into a sober living called hope manor um i didn't know what that was i did know that when i talked to people about it they said that this was the most strict sober living that there was in bismarck and i get there and and sh- Sure enough, I'm overwhelmed, right? With all the things I got to go to so many meetings, I have to get a sponsor, I have to work the steps, I have to get a job and do these chores, right? Um, so I do those things. Um, I'm, I get a sponsor, I get a job, I'm, I'm going to these meetings. And slowly over time, my perspective on things start to change, right? going through a a 12-step program, the whole point of most programs you go through like that is to develop a relationship with a higher power, right? Mm -hmm. Um, We'll fast forward a little bit more. Um, I'm in in Hope Manor and I've been there for a little while and they asked me to be the assistant manager of that sober living Mm -hmm. home, which means Certain days of the week, I have to stay home to be present with the guys that are in the house. And I report to the higher ups about what everybody else is doing, where people are. I'm giving you ways. So I'm doing good, right? Like I said, I can conform or comply. Um, Well, I was still pending some state charges. So I'm nine months. I'm nine months sober. I'm in sobriety in nine months. um, And I go to this hearing for state charges and I wasn't worried about it at all because I'm federally indicted. And most of the time from what I've seen the state just defers everything to, to the U S marshals. Um, not in my case, I go to this hearing and I pled guilty thinking I'm going to get probation and I get 15 years all suspended, but three, Mm -hmm. um, my heart sank to my butt at that moment, you know, I'm like, and then I started to get angry, right? Like I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I've seen all these other people get chances. Why me? Because poor Alex, right? I'm a victim. Like it's your guys' fault. It wasn't my fault, even though I was the one that took the action to be in that position in the first place, but I can't see that. And after I get sent in, from there, they gave me six hours to turn myself in or I'd have a warrant out for my arrest. And so I do, right? I, I took a few hours and I met up with my family and I, I said goodbye to my kids and my kids would, didn't understand because they're so young at this point. They didn't really understand anything other than daddy's sick, right? Mm-hmm. Daddy has to do these things so he can get better. Um, heartbreaking you know having to say goodbye and they didn't understand they thought i was doing better which i was doing better but they didn't understand why i had to go away again um whatever i go to prison and i'm i'm super upset that i'm there i'm resentful i'm mad at the world i'm i'm saying f creator f these meetings um F sober living, all of it's a joke. Why do it anyway? What's the point? Yep, correct. Um, except for the the founder of Hope Manor messaged me and was like, very supportive, and was like, "We got to figure out something to do with your time." Because while I was in prison, it was over COVID, right? So we're stuck in ourselves twenty three hours a day. She was like, "We need something to keep your mind busy." You know, yep. and or so, else you're setting yourself up for failure from the get go here. Yeah. Um, something to keep your mind busy. Right. So what she had me do is every week. Um, I would write what I'm going through, how I'm feeling, what I'm doing in prison, what's happening on the outside that I know about, things like that. And she so I would write them. She would post them on Hope Manor's website, and it was called Recovery Inside the Walls. It gave me a purpose, 
right? I didn't think what I was writing would impact anybody or if anybody would even read them, you know. But she would send me the comments from the Facebook to my messaging thing so I could read them. And I was just like, man, like, I can't believe how many, like, people are, are supporting me, you mm -hmm. know? Awesome. Um, either way, I uh, we will fast forward. We'll skip some of the stuff that happened when I was in prison. I get out of prison. I'm, 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 I'm facing my federal charges now. So I get out of state prison. I have to go to court for my federal stuff. And now I'm scared, right? I'm super yeah. scared because I'm no like, kidding. well, I just thought that I was going to get probation and I got sentenced to all this time. Um, and I go to court and the prosecutor followed my story while I was in prison and those those writings that I wrote for that year. I only went to prison for a year. I forgot to mention that. And I made parole. And I actually get off of parole in two weeks, which is cool. But I still have probation after that. But um, anyway, back to the federal thing. Um, the prosecutor followed my story. And while we were in court, he was more of a cheerleader for me or more of a support system for me than my own attorney. The drastic change in this person, he was like, you are not the same person that I followed around for the last three years, you know? And so they gave me a chance. They, they were like, we're gonna give you a time served sentence, meaning you don't have to go to federal prison. And we hope to, to continue to see your success, right? What a relief that was. I, I truly thought I was going to spend the rest of my life in a federal prison. Um, and I give all the credit to recovery programs, right? Those 12 step things, sober living. And just like, I don't know if you know, but like Bismarck has just a huge, awesome fellowship for people that are in recovery, right? Mm -hmm. This this state, this town really struggles with this fentanyl epidemic, right? And that's yeah. what I was part of. Um, do you so like think, said, sorry internet, to interrupt you, but do you think- I reached my hand out, you know? Yeah. Do you think that, uh, you talked about COVID and I know COVID was obviously massive, absolutely massive with addiction and um, just mental health. And I mean, people being locked up at home and people not being able to do anything and being thro so thrown off routine that, um, again, the, the mental health and addiction factor of COVID. You talk about how Bismarck is so supportive and so beneficial with so many programs that they have. It was was that kind of boosted during COVID or has that kind of system in Bismarck been like that for years? I don't know the answer to that. Um because I wasn't a part of it, right? It was, yeah. I had no idea that there was even a recovery fellowship. I didn't even know what meetings or any of that really was because I never thought I had a problem, right? For a long yeah. time, I didn't think I had a problem because I'm getting them from a doctor yeah. and I, I'm justified in my behavior. Um, all I know is when I did it was yeah it was right around COVID time when I when I came in to recovery um there was already so much and I fell in love with the people that were in those rooms because they were so willing to help they were so willing to like hang on to your hand and walk you through situations and they cared without expectation of doing anything back right mm -hmm. or giving or whatever so like when you go see a doctor right you're paying them these people you're not paying anybody you know, they're just there to be there to walk with you through it with no expectation that you have to do anything back, which is what really, really drove me deeper into the program because I love that. Right? I've never in my life have done, have felt like I've done, I don't know how to say it. Um, I always thought everything was a transaction. I do something for you and now you have to do something for me right yeah. not the case with with this program or with with these programs or with the recovery fellowship um i guess kind of depending on the individual but it's a program of attraction 
right? Rather than like promoting it, but like in people's action is is why you are drawn to it rather than them being talking the talk and not actually doing. It. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um. Anyway, I don't know if I answered your question at all, but. Oh, absolutely. So take me to any of your meetings, um, whether it's the facility that you were at or the programs you were part of. When you've when you've slowly the past couple of weeks, couple of years, whatever it is, kind of become the the positive voice or the kind of the sunshine in the room. I'm sure there's plenty of people in the room that have similar stories to yours or have a similar attitude and mindset is kind of how I'd look at it. Because again, I I know you're a very positive and optimistic person now because of everything you've been through and all the supports you've had. But what is kind of your message when you're able to go back to these programs and facilities and not just share your story, but um, what is what is sometimes your advice or where how does your optimism shine? What does that sound like from you with these people? Um, all all I do is I, I I share my experience, right? What I've been through, in hopes that when somebody hears what I've been through and see that I found my way out, that they're like, "Oh man, if he can do it, maybe I can too." Mm-hmm. right we put in the work and we stay out of the results and let god do what god does and 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 change hearts you know change change way of thinking um i suit up and i show up when somebody asks me to do something like this right to, to come speak and 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 hopes that what i'm doing is going to help the next person um i don't really know how it looks i just suit up and i show up and whatever happens is what i believe was supposed to happen you know yeah so fast forwarding to again it depends on on what it is you know anytime i see like somebody on busted newspaper or or whatever i see that i knew this person i'm always like hey man like I, i hope you get it figured out or in hopes that they see it when they get out and they reach out and I've had to have that happen, right? They were like, hey awesome. man, like, thank you for your for your kind words and how'd you do it? You know, cause people have mm-hmm. seen me in, in the bottom of the pit and to see where I am now, right? It's like, I went from being federally indicted to owning a home and, and being engaged to a beautiful girl in a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And people are attracted to that. Like, how did you do it? How did you get out? Like. You're a role model for for what recovery looks like, you know. And I and I think it's just because I shoot I shoot up and I show up. I say I have integrity, right? Like I I say I'm gonna be somewhere, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna say I'm gonna meet you here, I'm gonna call you at this time, and I do that, you know. Which is a huge skill to have as a human being in general, not just somebody who's gone through your story, but be, you'd be yeah. amazed how many people in education or sports or anywhere I've been that struggle to show up or show up on time or show up professionally, whatever. So again, a, a great skill to have to, to be present. And I know you talked about that earlier when you were when you were in jail and you weren't able to be present. And I'm sure that, I mean, drained your body and drained your happiness left and right. But um, I, I know I mentioned earlier that um, I've been able to follow you on social media and see all the happiness that comes out of you and your 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 family now, your your story now, your your present time more so than your past. Um, but talk about these these events, not even just events, but um, getting back into your your real life away from the jail cell. Um, I know you have two two kids, I believe, that I've seen pictures of you with, but. I know you've been able to take your daughter to the dance and you've taken your your boy to events and whatnot. What I know obviously happiness is a blaring word for you now, especially getting to do all these things and experiencing being a dad and being there for them as a dad. Um, but can you talk about just the feelings and how much it means to you to be able to go experience these things with your kids now? Man, you don't realize what you have until it's gone, right? Yep. Uh, Oof. The biggest joy of my life is to be able to show up for my kids. And it doesn't matter what we're doing. Yes, um, before I went to prison, no, right when I got out of prison, I seen there was like this butterfly dance thing at, at BHS. And so I bought tickets and 
and I I dressed up and went and picked her up and she looked like a princess, my daughter. And there's nothing better than seeing that smile on their face, you know, especially when I've put them through hell with with the things that I've done. Um and it's and it's so much more than just that, right? Like my my fiance has a son and I get to show up as as a dad to him, you know. Mm-hmm. I get to take him to to go work out and teach him how to do these things, right? Or or play sports with him, play video games. I've I've learned how to play Fortnite so I can be a part <laughs> of what he likes to do. Not very good, but I can play it's anyway right. just because it's fun, you know, and that's something we get a bond over. Um I don't being able to describe the feelings that that I go through, it's just grateful just to be that I'm even given the opportunity to still be a part of, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I probably didn't deserve to be in my my children's life, but I have fought for the last three years to get them back. Um, And it just recently has started to happen with my own children where I get to have them overnight, right? And it's just little baby steps, you know? I've had my kids, but when I did, it was always supervised for the last three years. And rightfully so, I'd look at what I did, you know? But once you you get out of that addiction and, and you're sober for like a month or two months, you're like, I'm better now. Everything that I did before, it was because I was an addict and I'm no longer an addict. So let me be what I'm supposed to be. It's like the mindset, right? It's not how that works as much as you want it to, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I read something one time and it's it was like a years of being an addict. And an alcoholic would make a skeptic out of anyone. How many times have I promised my mom, my kids' mom, my friend, family, whatever, that this time I mean it, I'm going to stop and I'm never going to pick up, right? I'm never going to do it again. I've learned my lesson. And it's like within five minutes of them leaving, I'm making the phone call or I'm going to the bathroom to do what I just told them I'm done doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and people that aren't addicts or alcoholics don't really understand, and that's okay. But at some point in your your addiction, whatever it may be, you lose the power of choice. Meaning, yes, I'm still making the decision, but like I have this thing that's in my mind that when I don't have what I need, when I'm when I'm using, I can't stop thinking about. It. Mm-hmm. And I and I obsess over my next high, my next drink, my next whatever, and I can't shake it, right? <clears throat> or the withdrawals of what I'm going through are so bad that I can't handle it. So I have to be physically separated. And then when I'm physically separated, like I just said, my mind goes crazy, and I obsess over those things. And what I have found to overcome that obsession is is God, right? Good or good orderly direction if you have a problem with with the God word, right? But like mm-hmm. for me that's what that that's what worked. Um I have this hole inside of me and I fill it with everything that I can. Right? And the only thing that can truly fill it is the presence of of a, a God in your life. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I can and I can fill it with every and doesn't even like even in sobriety, I can fill it with before I found my fiance, I can fill it with women, right? I can fill it with food, I can fill it with working out, I can fill it with whatever, but none of those things are sufficient when I'm faced with that choice if I, if I want to use it or not. You know? And the only thing that has kept me clean and sober to this day is, is staying a part of. Right, being involved with recovery, the the sober house, and and doing those things, 
and maintaining my relationship with with God. Right. I'm praying. Didn't even know how to pray when I first come in or when I got into the situation. The only prayer I knew how to pray was God get me out of this one this time. And I promise <laughs> different, you know, mm -hmm. that was the only prayer I really knew how to pray. Now, now it's a lot different than that. You know, mm -hmm. I, and I do that by every night before I go to bed, I get on my knees, I grab my fiance's hand and we pray. Right. And something happens to you when you do those things, right? The way you think starts to change. Like when you're always seeking the next right thing, right? Or like, God help me be of service to this person, you know, or or help me walk through this situation. Help me change the way that I'm thinking about this because it's been negatively affecting me. Help me show up as a better father. What starts to happen is your perspective changes, mm -hmm. right? The way you think starts to change, the way you talk, the way your heart is, all starts to change. And that's what I found in my life by praying, showing up to, to churches and and to be there for, for the next suffering Alex, right? I don't know. I'll let you talk now. So on another positive note, and you've mentioned her several times, um, you recently got engaged. I don't remember what date it was. I just remember your cool videos and um, kind of the manner in which you did it. But I also bring this up in the in the fact that she has a similar story to you, and you guys have a very unique story together as she was also incarcerated. Um, I As transparent and vulnerable or whatever you want to share, and I don't know if she's around with you right now, um, but... Um, can you kind of maybe briefly even talk about her story and um, how you guys kind of found each other and how how that those two positive pieces came together and you guys have really um, positively impacted each other into being engaged at this point? Um, yeah, so she, six years before me, same situation, right? In, in the wrong crowd and... Uh, was just, the way it sounded to me, wrong place, wrong time, right? Mm -hmm. She was just a user with somebody that had a lot of stuff, but because she was with, she got in 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 trouble too. Um, but yeah, very very similar story. She she went to to sober living, went through the program, has has maintained her sobriety since then, right? Um, how we met was by chance. I, I me and a, a buddy of mine from from the sober house went to go eat at where she works. She's a server. And we made eye contact and and we both just felt this like energy, right? So I messaged her after we got done eating and I was like, hey, thanks for the great service, whatever. <laughs> um and I kind of just let it die for a little bit and and it was Easter day and I, I was scrolling on facebook and her little head chat thing came up on messenger and i sent her another message and it it hasn't quit since you know um but i think a big part of what drew me to her when i met her was the relationship and the way that she talked about god and how present he is in her life right and how how close of a relationship she had and we talked for hours about our experience through the rough time you know what i mean like mm -hmm. what our lives looked like when we were in active addiction and and how it, those experiences have led us to who we are today right um yeah we got a pretty unique story, but it's 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 crazy. I don't want to touch too much on on what she's done, but anyway, I I met her at at her work, and it's never stopped. We we started hanging out, and the connection that her and I have together is, is something that I've never felt before. You know, um, it. How do I want to put it? Yeah. 
I don't know. I uh, it's hard because I don't want to share her story. If that no, makes sense. that's it's all but, good, man. No worries there. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's just we have what we have because of what we've been through and how much we can identify in with each other from what we've been through right how we grew up to what we were like when an active addiction and now what sobriety has brought us um what the my engagement thing so we were asked to to be these models for the painting yep. thing or whatever um <clears throat> there was 10 photographers there and and the people who asked us were but her friends and so i came to them with an idea of i want to propose during this mm -hmm. and it helped me come up with the the logistics of it right um hard to explain without without seeing the video that i've posted yeah. but um it couldn't have turned out any more beautiful than it did you know we were we were painting and the very last set I was supposed to paint a picture of her. I'm not an artist at all. And so <laughs> it was we had it planned out that I was gonna mess up on this portrait painting that I'm painting of her. And then behind it was, Will you marry me? So when I removed that and I'm already on my knees because I'm painting. And then I was like, Okay, babe, come look. And then she came to look and and caught her completely off guard. It was a, a beautiful experience. But <clears throat> yeah, I'll let you ask some more questions. Well, it's I don't have a whole lot more else for you other than I'm just super happy to see you guys happy and um, to see again where your entire story led to. And um, I think part of it, I think, I don't know if it's the, the parent to me or the teacher and coach in me, but um, just the support. And I know you've talked about even going on the busted page on Facebook that I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with just scrolling through. But I mean, I can scroll through there and see your name and comments left and right with just, hey, if if you need something, I'm here. You might not know who I am, but um, right. if, if you hear my story, I'm always here to support. And I, I think we we need more people in, in this world like that. I know I, um, I won't name too many names, but there's plenty of people that I know that um, hear your story or just see kind of the gist of your negativity that's happened in your life. And they, I know I'm sure you felt left out or written off or people kind of moved on from you in whatever aspect. But again, I think as a teacher, seeing different kids from different backgrounds, you know, finding their own trouble, but also getting second chances. Um, I, I think it's, uh, again, as a teacher, it's definitely changed my perspective on how I view anybody and I think that's transpired into me seeing your story and how, again, I, I see people our age and up or down a couple of years, whatever, see um, them be successful and them being happy starting families. And it it just makes me happy as much as it is to have my own family. So um, I wish you guys nothing but the best. I know you guys are super supportive of each other, and I hope you guys can stay on the positive road ahead. Um, and my, my last question I usually have on podcasts uh, episodes is do you have any questions for me and i know um a lot of this was aimed at your story but do you have any any questions for me at all in any categories not really i think and what i've i've, I've thought for a long time is like addiction or like getting into a position like i was in right like it doesn't care what your what your class is what color your right. skin is if you're male or if you're female or whatever pronoun you want to call it, right? Mm -hmm. It happened to anybody, right? Um, for me, it, it started off by an accident, you know? I never thought that my life would have turned out the way that it did. But it literally, in a, a car accident, you can get hurt playing football, whatever. Yeah. You know, and that's where the awareness needs to come in, right? Is, and then how we overcome those things. But no questions for you. I appreciate you having me on. If anybody is in and needs any help, they can find me on social media, get a hold of you. You can give them my number. However, it's so much easier for me to talk about 
my story when I don't feel like I have to be limited. I don't know if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, um, I hear you. And just being being able to be raw. So if anybody is in need of help, I have plenty of resources. If you don't want to talk to me, I know hundreds of people, male and female, whatever. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for joining. Once again, I continue to look forward to watching you guys just be a happy family and just, I mean, sober and all nothing but positivity and optimism as you go forward. So thanks for stopping by and I'll talk to you and keep in contact. All right, brother. I appreciate it. Later.